The goal of this tutorial is to introduce to the user the basics of using Rational Publishing Engine to extract data from Rational Requisite Pro and create output documents to present in a friendly way the extracted data. We will start Rational Publishing Engine Document Studio and we will create a template to extract all the requirements of a Requisite Pro project and related information. So start by adding a REST data source named as a requirements. This data source will be used later to extract the software requirements information. In this tutorial, Guidepram is the name of the machine providing data services for Requisite Pro on the 8181 port. The resource navigation is possible for resources with href attribute which is the next resource URL. The current URL is always displayed in every wizard page. Each wizard page will ask to choose an href value. Select the href element in the project node and click next. In this tutorial the learning project, traditional will be used. Check the ref in the resource folder and click the next button. The requirements represents the interesting data for this tutorial. Select the resource URL and click next. Select the href element in the requirements collection node and click the next button. Select the SA resource and press finish to get the schema for SA requirements. Schema will be downloaded and added to template. Add the second REST data source named PR requirements that will be used to extract project requirements information. The process of getting the schema is similar. The same steps must be performed in order to discover the resources. The only difference is the name of the schema and the final href which is PR. Schema will be downloaded and added to template like the previous one. Alternatively to this process of schema discovery, you can provide the URL to the schema in the add data source wizard from document studio. The third data source named project, has also the type rest and the steps to get the schema are similar. This schema will be used to extract projects information like description, name and path. The difference is the final href which is learning project traditional. Select this resource URL and press finish to complete the wizard and to download the schema. The project schema was added and we have three schemas in our data source view. This will be the final output document. For each software requirement element it will be displayed a set of attributes and image if available. For the image presented as a figure in the output document, it will be inserted a figure caption of which text will be retrieved from a data source attribute. Using recursion, it will be extracted all descendant software requirements and in the output documents it will be inserted a set of attributes for each descendant requirement. From the palette which is located in the left side of the screen insert a paragraph. From SA requirements insert the query using drag and drop on the paragraph. In the first paragraph insert another one. Drag and drop the full tag attribute of the SA requirement query as value from the data source view in the newly inserted paragraph. Do the same thing for text attribute. Drop it after the first text element. We need to use it as a value, so select the second option and click OK button. Insert a paragraph and a text element inside first paragraph. To set the value of a text double click on element and write the value status in dialog. Press OK. 
drag from s a requirements the status attribute and drop it after status text. Select user's value option and click OK. Now let's see how outputs documents looks like in this moment. Save a document template. RPE Launcher is synchronized with RPE Document Studio, so the template will be added in a new document specification. But before running the document specification, data sources must be configured in the launcher perspective. Select a data source and click Configure from contextual menu. In the Configure REST data source dialog select Discover and the REST resource discovery wizard will start. The steps of configuring all three data sources are the same as for obtaining the schemas. We will skip the configuration steps for the last two data sources in this video. If all the data sources are configured, publishing process can be started. During the execution the console outputs messages about the publishing process. When document generation is finished, the results dialog appears. This is the word output which contains all the software requirements followed by status. Go back in RPE Studio perspective to add some modifications. Add a native filter on the main paragraph. Enter the filter expression that extracts elements of level 0, where level is an attribute from schema. Insert a container in the main paragraph and an image element inside it. Containers are used to hold properties and elements together. Now double click on image and set the value of the image using data expressions. Expand the software requirement node and select image attribute as content. On container we will add a condition to avoid to create the image when the image value is empty. Drag the image attribute and drop it on the script expression editor. Write the condition and press the OK button to add it on the container. We want to center the image, so go to formatting properties of the image and set the image alignment value to center. A star will appear for every property that has been modified. Now we want to extract the informations from children relationship requirement. For this drop this query from software requirements data source on a new container. The container will have a paragraph inside and a text contain the full tag attribute. By dragging the full tag attribute on the paragraph and selecting the use as value option RPE will automatically create a text on that location and set the query. We will now handle the recursive level and the recursive segments. RPE can follow the links recursively. Each object can have many links so the number of object to be processed can increase exponentially with each level. In this way you can limit how deep the query will go and how many segments from query will be used to construct the recursive query. Set the value 4 for recursive level and 3 for recursive segments. Save your template and make a quick run to view how the output documents looks like. This time. You don't need to configure your document specification since it is configured from the first execution. This is how your word output should look like.
In the same way we will extract information from the project requirements data source. Inside the main paragraph insert a container with traces from relationship requirement query from software requirement data source. Expand the elements in the schema tree until you'll find the requirement element. Once you find it, drag the element and drop it on the container. Insert another container with project requirements PR requirements from project requirements data source. Once queries are assigned to template elements, all the attributes of the elements returned by the queries can be used. In the Select Context dialog choose the Use as Value option and press OK. Add a new variable name related requirement ID, which will be used in an assignment. When designing a template, it might be necessary to calculate values or make available data attributes in contexts where normally they would not be available. This can be achieved through the mechanism of variable assignment. Use contextual menu to add a new assignment. The variable assignment allows to set static data or data available in the current context as value of a variable at any given time. Assign the unique ID from software requirement on data expression tab. Now let's add a scripted filter on the container. The difference between native filters and scripted filter is that a native filter is interpreted by the data source while the scripted filter is processed by a PE as it extracts data from the data source. The scripted expression editor assists the user in defining a JavaScript expression using the data attributes and variables accessible in the current context. Add the filter related requirement ID equals unique ID and press OK to add the scripted filter. Save your template and start the document generation process. At any time during the document generation, you can cancel the document generation or hide the progress in the background. As you can see in Word output we have also added the project requirements data. To handle the header, the footer and the properties of a document, we need a master page. In Document Studio click Master Pages, New Master Page, insert the name and click OK. Once added, the master page is visible in the outline view and a new tab containing the master name is added in the editor area. In the header we want a table with one row and two cells. First cell will have two paragraphs and will have a short description of report. Second cell will contain the project name. In each paragraph insert a text element. Double click and set the value software development lifecycle report. A master page defines 